This week, Reuters' Bridget Bays talks to the man behind the Playboy empire, Hugh Hefner. Our 1996 Game of the Year, Casey Sanchez. Come on up. After more than four decades as Playboy's King Rabbit, Hugh Hefner has survived the perks of the job. At 70, the man, some have dubbed the Peter Pan of soft porn, is showing signs of growing up. He's now married with a young family. And after suffering a mild stroke, he's decided to cultivate a new, more domesticated image. Now, you've always said that you reinvented yourself many times. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah. And now, do you think there's any reinvention possible? Well, it's always possible, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at now. I think that one of the things that's made these uh, September years rather golden is the fact that I have come full circle, have ridden the waves, am in a safe harbor now that I really, um, I've never been happier. And I'm, it's because, in part, of the life that I've lived, exploring all the adventures and the other possibilities, but looking back on that with great satisfaction and having found a, a woman with, with Kimberly and uh, a family connection and raising two young boys, that makes me feel you know, like I'm back home again. Hmm. So the, the reinvention is uh, not on the horizon for the moment. I think it's complete, full circle. Mm -hmm. To many, Playboy appears a throwback to another age. It was launched in 1953, and today, despite the arrival of hardcore videos and cyber porn, the magazine strives to keep its classical shape. Where do you think Playboy today, as far as a, an editorial magazine, falls in terms of its subject matter. I, I, I don't mean necessarily right wing or left wing, mm -hmm. but where in that scope do, is it heading journalistically? Well, I think that it remains essentially the magazine that, uh, that it has always been. I mean, it is a, um, a, mag a magazine that represents personal freedom, personal economic and political freedom. Uh, I think in that sense it has a tremendous, one of the reasons that it's so hugely popular overseas is because it represents that part of the American dream. It is a sing, single symbol that really represents, a, you know, that more sophisticated perception of a good life that is rooted in democracy, mm. you know, a free society, uh, free men and women in a free society. Mm. And I think that has tremendous appeal, not only in America, but, but abroad, and, and increasingly so with the disappearance of communism, the emergence of the third world, the fact that the walls have come down in the last few years, that the technology has turned us literally into now a global village, uh, is a very exciting time for me. And it's why, to some extent, I feel as if Playboy is on the threshold of a tremendous expansion uh, in just the years immediately ahead. We just have launched uh, a Playboy TV in London. The launch party in London was held in a deconsecrated church. Among the playmates of guests was Playboy's chief executive officer, Christina Hefner, Hugh's daughter. What the programming is really all about is enhancing the quality of relationships between women and men. Now you've handed over the runnings of, of the empire to your daughter, mm -hmm. but you evidently spend more time now mm -hmm. uh, making creative decisions. True. Yes, she runs the business. It's a very nice team. She runs the business and I do the, the creative end. And you, you spend more time now than you used to. Well, it, I, had a, you know, I had a stroke in 1985 and there was a period in which um, I really relinquished uh, you know, almost all interconnection to the company. Uh, but I would say most certainly in the last handful of years I'm more actively involved in the magazine, in, in Playboy TV, the videos, the creative end, mm -hmm. marketing than ever before. Mm -hmm. Or certainly in the last, more than in, in the last decade. And there must be a lot of creative work to do. Oh, yes. Busy, busy, busy. But, but fun stuff, you know, things that I... Very excited about the Internet. You know, really just had a long conversation with uh, a couple of my editors in, in uh, Chicago before I came down here, talking about that new Playmate fan club and uh, the website. Hugh Hefner. Do you take Kimberly Conrad, here present, to be your wife? I do. 
1989, when Hefner married Kimberly, a former Playmate of the Year, he was 63 and she was 26. But despite the age difference, they now have two young boys, Marston and Cooper. He also has two other children from his first marriage, which ended over 30 years ago. You don't go out very often. We no, heard. very rarely. So, when when was the last time that you probably went out and went shopping on your own? Or well, I didn't go out shopping, but uh, believe it or not, last Thursday I went out with Kimberly and the two children to an open house at uh, Marson School, oh. and uh, that was wonderful. I think I uh, I took a look at I, I saw a couple of your sons outside, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. told Bill I said the the resemblance was. And not from a distance was was quite shocking yes, actually. Yes, everything, everything with the pipes. Yes. <laughs> and I hadn't even met you yet, but only having seen your image and then seen your son, I thought, my God. They even just have. Like uh, the they, they even have matching pajamas. <laughs> yes, silk pajamas. Yeah. Wonderful. They don't wear them to school though. No, they don't wear them to school, but to parties. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now obviously life has changed considerably uh, with your two young sons, mm -hmm. but. Uh, the sign used to say outside, uh, it, don't uh, it, don't ring if you don't swing. Y yes, correct? right. Uh, if you don't swing, don't ring. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now it's children at play. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> there may be a connection there. I, there could be. Sure. They could be interchangeable, actually. <laughs> yes, absolutely. One comes from another. <laughs> okay. The Playboy Mansion has always played a very important part in your work and in your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is it a symbol of? Well, it's a Disneyland for adults. I mean, um, I think that it is uh, a place uh, where I feel most secure, and it's also a gathering place of uh, you know good friends, and and um, and it has become uh, you know kind of a symbol for many years of uh, the heart and soul of Playboy. Mm -hmm. I think it. Uh, is certainly uh, world famous, and uh, and we use it to good advantage, both on a personal and and a business level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's an ongoing symbol of. A lot yes, of things. even though you know, even though uh, you know now it um, you know the the pool is not filled with playmates in the same way that it was. Uh, so much of uh, the rest of the world has shared uh, that. Evolution with me, and 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 taken, I think, a certain pleasure and delight in seeing the uh, the changes. I think that um, you know the, the the mansion exists now in kind of a mystique that is connected to the past and also to the present. <laughs> you know, there are uh, children's toys in the great hall, and that has a natural kind of romantic connection, I think, for me and for a lot of other people because I've lived that other life. So now this is the famous Playboy. This is the the pool. famous pool. And the, the cave and grotto, and the jacuzzi baths in there. The pool is actually circular in, in shape, so that it goes around and under the, this is the shallow end, goes under the waterfall, and then out under a, a ledge underneath. And the jacuzzi baths are over the, over the hill there. Mm -hmm. And the, the grotto was your idea? The grotto was my idea. An expansion of, of uh, the, the jacuzzi bath that I had in a Roman bath in Chicago. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And how much use does it get? Nowadays. Well, it gets used from the children, uh, Mama and the children. Now, it used to get a very different kind of use, of course. It's you know, one of the swinging centers of my swinging world. But what new fantasies, not necessarily sexual fantasies, mm -hmm. have do you sort of want to exercise? Well, I think I'm living them out now with uh, with Kimberly and the children, uh, and a coterie of close friends, and feeling very much connected to. We spend a lot of time watching old classic films. Uh, a lot of the music we play here is uh, Bix Beiderbecke and Al Boley, and uh, it's uh, music and movies from a time earlier in the century when the dreams were young and and uh, first being born. And that is very much the magic of retro. Because mm -hmm. I was back, I, you know, I was back there dreaming those dreams. Hefner has turned the Playboy Mansion into a pleasure dome, full of Japanese carp and other exotic wildlife from around the world. There are still a few rabbits hidden away, too. Why is birds so important? 
I don't know the answer to that. In other words, I just think that uh, there's a rich variety to them. In other words, why birds rather than other kinds of animals? We do have other kinds of animals. We haven't, uh, you know, we have the rabbits and we have turtles and we have, uh, well, we have a, uh, a, a small python and you know, they're kind of hiding around. The python is in Kimberly's, uh, in Kimberly's room. She loves animals too. That's one of the common connections we have is a lot of, lot of animals. Uh -huh. There's all these new um, uh, scientific developments, new technologies mm -hmm. uh, on how to uh, reinvigorate people as they mm -hmm. get older, to extend mm -hmm. our lives mm -hmm. beyond the age of 100. Would you ever be interested in trying any of those? Absolutely. If it's legitimate, absolutely. In other words, I think that as long as you are healthy, age is largely a point of view. It's a matter of what's in your mind. and. Uh, I feel as young, uh, you know, now as I did 20 years ago, and uh, you know, I think that having good genes is very important. Mama is over 100, but uh, you know, I think that uh, if if the quality of life is good, then uh, you go for as much quantity as you can manage. Mm -hmm. After inventing the Playboy concept in the early 50s, Hugh Hefner went on to reinvent his own image. He groomed himself into a Playboy and lived out his sexual fantasies, all very different from his austere family background in the Midwest. My own parents were raised you know, in, in Nebraska, uh, strong Methodists, very Puritan, and I did, and, did, and my brother did too, I have a younger brother. Uh, we did rebel against that. Uh, and so did the generations that followed us. Hmm. But it's sometimes the apple doesn't fall far Too from the far tree. Too far from the tree. No, uh, I think that there's ultimately. also a major part of me that's also very Puritan. Uh, my ideals came directly from my mother and father. And uh, I think that in that sense, uh, my life is, is truly typically American because I think that America itself is very schizophrenic on the whole subject of uh, of sex and pleasure, mm. so that you see that that's why things change a little bit, and then they don't change that much. Mm. I think that the eight, the 1980s had a lot to do with the 1950s. I think there was a backlash to the more liberal, permissive attitudes that prevailed in the 60s and 70s. The sexual revolution of the 60s made Hefner a rich man, but it also encouraged him to develop his own Playboy philosophy and to have wider cultural aspirations for his magazine. But how, in the last 40 years, has Playboy influenced culture then? Well, I think rather dramatically. I think that uh, in certain, uh, even though you do see that back and forth uh, and you see the backlash to it, uh, I do think that uh, America and the world today is much more liberated in terms of sexual values than it was when we began. And I think Playboy takes, and I take some, some legitimate pride in that. 
In other words, I think that uh, the dress that you are wearing today, uh, attitudes towards um, premarital sex, uh, towards a number of social and sexual values and laws have changed. And I think it played, played a part in that, led the way to some extent. You know, it really happened in the middle 60s. You know, Playboy began in 1953, and it was around 1965, 66 that uh, the explosion took place. In June 1966, the explosion hit London's Park Lane. When Hefner opened his first Playboy Club in Europe, membership wasn't exactly cheap. Playboy wanted a return for its multi-million dollar investment in the project. Hugh Hefner, why have you brought the bunnies here except for your own profit? That's my principal motive. <laughs> what are they going to do for Britain and Europe in a time when the whole area has been accused of moral decline? Well, I don't think that uh, Playboy is related to moral decline. I think uh, that um, some of the uh, better leisure, uh, some of the emphasis on, uh, on leisure living and uh, uh, the good things of life uh, are the things that stop people from uh, spending their time at uh, destructive things like war. How much is it going to cost us to enjoy the delights that you offer? As much as you want to spend. <laughs> With all this travel, Hefner needed his own airplane, which was christened the Big Bunny. In-flight service provided by Jet Bunnies. We have hi-fi controls and volume controls here. We have uh, a ground telephone here that permits us to talk direct to the ground from the airplane. Over on the wall behind us, we've got uh, the videotape screen and also uh, audio tapes uh, directly in, in front of us on the plane. We have the, uh, the living room, combination living room and conference room and uh, discotheque area. It also uh, permits us there to show 60 millimeter films in cinemascope size and uh, the videotape equipment is there. Uh, in front of that we have additional uh, seating areas that can also be turned into state rooms for sleeping. At its peak in 1972, Playboy had a circulation of around 7 million copies, but today the worldwide figure is closer to 5 million. The slump in sales has been most acute in the American market. Well, Playboy was for many years on the cutting edge of the sexual revolution. Mm -hmm. And now, is it taken more of a backseat? Is it more on the fringe? Well, it continues to be the single most influential and largest selling men's magazine in the world. So. Uh, it is very difficult. I think what people tend to do sometimes is compare time frames, and you can't do that. You can't compare the impact that Playboy had in the 50s and 60s with uh, Playboy in the 90s. The reality is, however, that there are other parts of the world in which it's still the 1950s. So Playboy is having the same kind of impact in other portions of Asia and Eastern Europe that is very similar to what was going on here in the 50s and 60s. Because they are now just beginning to experience uh, the cultural and social sexual changes that have already taken place here. Mm -hmm. So the global market is maybe more, it's still on, very much on the forefront, you think? You betcha, absolutely, sure. Yeah. And it is interesting that because we never really escaped from the Puritan part of our heritage, that the same conflicts and controversies uh, are going on today as before. So there was the same, there are still the same kinds of arguments and controversies related to censorship, related to abortion rights, related to personal freedom uh, that were going on in the 50s. Centerfolds in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, a lot of women's groups have been complaining successfully mm -hmm. about publicly displayed centerfolds, <laughs> which were male workplaces beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? I think it is much to do about nothing, or to put it another way, it, it is rather like Orwellian 1984. In, um, in George Orwell's book, in a future authoritarian or dictatorial uh, society, they created a language called Newspeak, mm -hmm. in which you change the perception of things and change history by changing labels, changing the language. I have seen here in the last 40 years what were previously perceived as pinup pictures turned then into and referred to as exploitation and now referred to as pornography. Well, it doesn't really change those images. That's a political uh, agenda. And the notion that tasteful pinup pictures of either men or women 
uh, being perceived as exploitation or as sexual harassment, I think, is bizarre. So banning sex from the workplace, which seems to be the present movement, mm. is... Uh, Silly. In other words, I think sexual harassment should be uh, eliminated, but to redefine sexual harassment uh, as a, being a picture on the wall is crazy. Mm. It is the, de the definite trend, though. Well, it certainly was a trend in the 80s. I don't know. You know, that was a, during that political, that PC period, that political correctness period. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's the trend uh, at the moment. I don't know. When the skirts go back up again, I suspect that we're moving in the other direction. <laughs> kind of a barometer, you know. In other words, women, I think, are more, um, are dressing se more sexually uh, now than they were 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I see some hints of the 60s and 70s coming back. It's a good thing. Over the last three decades, Hefner has often found himself at odds with the women's movement, who see the whole Playboy philosophy as nothing more than a cover for pornography. Well, the lifetime of, of Playboy, the magazine, mm -hmm. has kind of paralleled the modern feminist movement. Mm -hmm. How, uh, what, is, what is Playboy's relation now to the feminist movement. The feminist movement found its voice in the 60s uh, and became increasingly popular. And, you know, it, it, it began with free dance, uh, feminine mystique in the early 60s and then became, really found its voice in the late 60s and, and uh, early 70s. The fact that also in the process, a portion of it became anti-sexual, anti-playboy. Uh, I think it's unfortunate because I think that, quite frankly, there is an intimate interconnection between the sexual revolution, Playboy, the women's movement, uh, the gay revolution. I think all of these uh, are a quest for personal identification and identity and a more liberal set of values towards, uh, or should be, towards sex and male-female relationships. A portion of the women's movement and a, part, a portion that got a lot of Publicity, particularly the McKinnon Dworkin portion of it in the in the eighties, uh, is unfortunate. But I think also that will pass because you can't become a more complete person, whether you're male or female, if you don't also accept your own sexuality and the images of sexuality. There have been a lot of uh, high-profile sexual harassment cases in the news lately, even involving the president and corporations like Mitsubishi. Uh, how does that, is that a trend? Well, I think you have to say it's a trend. I don't know whether, whether uh, there's more sexual harassment, but I think there's certainly a, a greater awareness and publicity related to it. Uh, I think sexual harassment is... Uh, a problem and has always been a problem and it really has more to do with power than sex. Uh, when I started the Playboy Clubs, I, that's 1960, uh, I established uh, the bunny mother in each of the clubs because I didn't want the bunnies beholden to male management because I was sensitive to that kind of problem. Uh, having said that, I also think that the concept of sexual harassment has turned into kind of a, uh, a popular Football. It's a, it's a, a, a. One sees harassment now in some areas where um, one wonders whether it really exists. I mean, in some quarters, uh, a pinup picture on a wall is considered sexual harassment. Well, that reflects a very negative attitude, and I think a political attitude towards sex. Um, I don't think there's more sexual harassment today than there was before. I think when it was hidden, that's when there was a lot of sexual harassment. I mean, it was a, it certainly. It was the, the way of things in, in Hollywood, for example. In other words, uh, the abuse of, of power, the, ca the classic casting couch, that kind of phenomenon. Uh, and that sort of thing disappears with um, publicity. And Hefner has always been a master of publicity. Over the decades, he's made the bunny logo one of the most famous trademarks in the world. But he's also developed his own personal trademark. Now, a personal question I've always wanted to ask you myself. Why do you hang out in pajamas? It's so comfortable. Once I realized that I could get away with it, <laughs> then, you know, it was a wonderful moment. Very, very comfortable. My big decision of the day is, you know, what color pajamas to put on. <laughs> but you usually have a color scheme. Yes, well, during the day, it's gunfighter black. I usually wear black during the day, but then more colorful at night.
But oh. it's, it's very comfortable. It's very nice. So black is not the evening wear necessarily. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. Sort of going against the grain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've seen the red before. I was hoping for the purple. Well, we get the purple in the evening. Oh, okay. Right. I wore purple last night. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm.